Well, we've been gone for a hot minute. It's been it's been uh, hard times. I mean, how could anyone really be the same after hearing the news? I mean, I'll always remember the date, time, and location I was when I heard that uh, our beloved Queen God Emperor Mother Lizzie, the second, the second one, she's she's passed. I mean, Mer- Merlin's no longer a fucking vegan because Lizzie's dead. That is not why. This it's. It's hit us all. It's hit us all a little bit. A little bit. I mean, I, I won't lie to you. I had a gun in my mouth yesterday because oh I, I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew that, um, I knew she wasn't with us anymore. And you know what, what happens when a, when a fucking white woman like Princess Diana comes around thinking she's hot shit, who's going to put her in her place in the ground under, underneath the ground? I mean, it's, it's just going to be a hard day for those, for those ugly fucks in the UK. It's gonna be hard for them. It's gonna be hard for all of us. Gay programming. Hey, 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 what's up? To another episode of Gay Programming. Psych! We gotcha. It's not actually the Yas Queen podcast. We're still two lovable gay fuckers who are going to talk, um, and yeah, and fill an hour every single time. Uh, without fail, never, never, a, a t- never even a second under an hour. It's always an hour crisp and firm. Uh, so yeah, here we are on another. Well, today's Monday. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a while since we've recorded one of these because we have been having a whirlwind of a couple of days. Yeah, we that been up we to did a lot. not really anticipate. We kind of figured that eventually we would probably have a whirlwind of days, but I guess we did not think initially that it was going to happen as quick as it did. So why don't you tell the lovely audience what's been happening? And uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so a few months ago, when it all began, I finally started to fall victim to the lovable less trendy version of the whole living in a van thing and i know you know van life you know yeah. small you know not it's it's in close association with the tiny house culture but put that shit on four wheels yeah man um so i started looking at vans and i thought you know i think i got kind of overwhelmed by all of the perfect pinterest i had daddy's money like van remodels and i thought i could never do that and then i saw some cheaper ones again and i thought oh shit i could probably totally do that so anyway we went to uh seattle good three hour drive right after i got my covid booster uh that sucked but we got there yeah and we were just gonna browse we were just gonna look we found this used van you know um yeah big old fo- you know you say that like oh we just found this used van no 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 let's set this picture because again this is a uh, uh verbal uh <laughs> format you can't see the van but let me tell you this thing is a fucking tank massive huge large now i'm a very big woman i'm six foot five uh this thing stands probably on its wheels I want to say something like maybe even seven foot, honestly, with the wheels, maybe. a little under. But and this big old badonka donk ass, the biggest fucking ass you've ever seen on a van. Like literally, you would be you'd be driving behind this thing on the highway, and you would want to be Brrr! you want to do that. It's so fucking big. It's massive. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, you picture a cargo van, and you're like, oh yeah, a little van. And then I saw it when we went there, and I was like, oh shit big van um and we bought it surprise to us <laughs> on a payment plan yes we did not pay cash for it because it was i loved how they suggested that they're like oh did, I, did you hear that the fucking guy he was like oh are you gonna pay in cash or are you gonna finance yeah and I'm like look <laughs> no. like look at us you motherfucker we came from portland yeah <laughs> We're showing you fucking renting stubs to yeah. prove our good, like legitimacy of paying you. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty funny when he said that. I was just like, no, no, we're financing. Yeah. Uh, in fact, with almost pretty much nothing down other than a trade-in that we still owe money on. Yeah. Um, 
So we did that. Yeah, and... we got a big ass van, and I, I gotta tell you, because we, again, we were driving up to Seattle just to look at it. And then we were gonna come home, mull it over for a bit, maybe save up a little for a down payment. Yeah, I mean, this was gonna plan. be a lot of process um, to it, but you know, we got there. Uh, we also went there to partially see how much they would give in for Merlin's Kia. Uh, Which I totally haggled them and got them to go up by a thousand dollars. Yeah, yes, go but, me. Yeah, yeah, but um, uh, it still didn't give you a dime. But they did. You haggled. <laughs> you got one over on them, buddy. I didn't get one over on them, but I at least had the guts to go. Actually, we got a better a offer. Real haggler. If Rick fucking Harrison was in that fucking shop, he would have gotten them to give him a two thousand dollar cash check. Even he had to start somewhere. This is just my beginning, baby. This is That's my true. second car. That's true. Rick Harrison, you know, he started selling diamond, like, rare vintage 1920, like, dimes. And look where he is now. A shitty pawn shop next to the <laughs> airport in Las Vegas. That could be you one day. It could be me. But, yeah, you know, regardless, we, we did essentially, you know, like, you know, not to bore people with the, the exciting, thrilling world of car dealership process. <laughs> Um, but, you know, we essentially got to a point where we were able to trade Merlin's car to pay off his car, not worry about it, and uh, move on to starting a payment plan uh, with no money down, which was really great. It's um, kind of great, but all the finance bros are going to come at us like, that's awful. You have to pay so much interest on the loan. You always put money Well, down. all I'm saying is uh, eventually, at some point, I will own a van. <laughs> you fucker will just have, be like on the sidelines, still in your apartment, going like, yeah, you see, you got to make sure your money works for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck off. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, we've started the process and I didn't need to pay a cent to start this fucking process. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, it's in our names. It's our, pretty much our thing. It's our, it's our baby. Yeah. I think that's really what's, uh, as nerve wracking as this whole process has been. Uh, and just like, kind of like, you know, I, I was so like, I was so anxious and nervous yeah. that I couldn't even drive the damn thing back to Portland. Cause I was like, for sure. You were, you admitted to me a little bit later that you were, like, also worried about it. Just, like, the idea of, like, oh, driving this thing? And we're going to crash as soon as yeah. we drive our back three hours to Portland. Yeah, no, I was like, what if I total this car that we just fucking bought? Yeah, but it's thankfully, you know, like, Merlin was an awesome trucker. He was great <laughs> behind the wheel, and he's been great behind the wheel continuously. Um you know, hopefully big old pussy me will get over my fucking hesitancy to drive the tank. The, the, the big Bertha. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit intimidating. Who is named Benji, by the way. Yeah, whatever. But uh, don't tell them our child's name. Oh. I'm going to edit that out so they don't know that. Because I don't oh, want them to. I didn't know what you were I don't want it. them to find Benji's school. Okay. I don't want, th I don't want right. them to find my car's school yeah and then follow them and kidnap my car yeah that's 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 car owning 101 I'm i sorry i, I learned that from taken <laughs> um but uh yeah no i mean it's it's the thing that like as anxious as it is the one thing that's kind of brought me back to like a peaceful place in it and really an optimistic one is just uh this is the first time where <laughs> I mean, it's something that we both own. Yeah. Like, collectively. And again, you know, finance bros will be like, you don't technically own it. Yeah. You will own it, blah, 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 blah. but, you know, we still have something that, uh, you know, unlike an apartment or other situations, um, it's not something that's just temporary, that's owned by another individual, and we just so happen to occupy that space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our o most optimistic thing is to convert this thing, because it's pretty beat up. We want to make clear. I don't think we. I don't think we've made that clear that the inside. Yes. Apparently, someone was doing with this same band, Benji. I'm not editing it out, but um, this, change your mind. <laughs> yeah, fuck that shit. I'm not editing more of this. But um, you know, like Benji, our van. Basically, oh was someone like yeah. tried to do this before. Gave up for one reason or yeah, another. There's like, sold it, and now we have it. Yeah, no. There's like a whole bunch of screws coming out of the floor. There's 
insulation in between the wall panels that aren't covered with anything. So, you know, there's definitely a fair bit of progress made on it, but I think there's some stuff where I'm like, they just didn't, I don't know if they didn't do this very well or if it didn't hold up very well, but... I just think it might have been um, from people that just, like, probably weren't willing to pay someone to do it or even, like, <laughs> take the time to figure out how to do it. Thankfully, like, I I used to build sets when I was younger, so... Yeah, my mom but when houses. I saw those fucking things, I was like, even I would be like, you can't keep that there. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, so, like, it looks like a kindergartner took a staple gun and just started, like, taking it to the wall. Yeah, and I was telling my mom about it earlier, and she was like, oh, we'll keep whatever of it you can because that stuff's expensive. And I'm like, no, no, we'll keep the supplies, but, like, that roof area, like, there's nails that just don't go into anything. Yeah, They're just it's... through the wood into nothing. And it's like heavy wood, too. Why would you want that on the roof? I'm going to go on a whole ramble. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's definitely like a big, huge work on process. And, um, you know, but hey, it's something that I'm really excited to with um, with you. And who knows, maybe, maybe episode 100 will be us recording in the back of our, our completed van somewhere in, in Yellowstone. That would be so cute. With with some guy shitting in an outhouse, and we, we riffed on that for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Think about that. That's going to be on the Patreon, a, a Patreon exclusive. So you better... You better... You better get your yeah. wallets. You better get that $5 and... Put it in a safe, lock it up, <laughs> save it a while, because you know when you need it, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on some fire ass content in the van. <laughs> Gotta have some remote on the road income somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So give it to us. Yeah. Give your fucking little meager little pennies and give it to us. But how do you feel? How do you feel about it? Because I know you're you're definitely a lot. I'm the dumb fucking you know fucking brute who's gonna you know, screw shit in and stuff. <laughs> but you're you're kind of the brains of the operations here. Oh, you're, I don't know. Uh, I'm the impulse, maybe. I don't well, know you're the impulse, but you brains. definitely have been organizing a lot of this. And, um, you know, like, uh, how do you feel so far? I know it's very early on in the process, but do you feel optimistic? Oh, you, I feel you... so optimistic. In terms of, like, just car stuff, I'll feel better when all of the... Uh car stuff is done like i have to take it to a dealer to get it looked at because there's a couple lights on and i have to uh deal with registering it and everything because i think in florida all that stuff just carries over from your last car but not here and i didn't know that so i kind of didn't know what i was getting into and now i'm like oh fuck i have to go to the dmv but it's fine yeah. i did it all before when we moved i can do it again um, yeah, it's just all the basic bureaucracy of getting a new car. Yeah, yeah. It, which is the first time I've ever, like, not the first time I bought a car, obviously, this is my second car, but first time I've done it entirely by myself with, like, you, but not with, like, someone guiding me through it, I guess, because the first car I bought, my dad was kind of there to talk me through the process, but, um... In terms of potential living in it and converting it, I'm so excited. I'm like, I know I promised you we would not like start tomorrow in air quotes, but I'm so ready. Um, and I'm really excited to do the fun stuff like picking out cabinets and doing design stuff. So I'm kind of like, but ah shit, we have to like save up for a battery first and like do all the wiring, which is so fun. But... Yeah, that will definitely be probably the most tedious and uh, uh, fucking hair pulling out. And we're going to do it all on our own. We're going to uh, wear um, like steel toed boots that like, you know, just connect to the ground in no way. Like they're floating almost in air uh, and we'll stick, you know, a fork or like, you know, some metal object that we're holding directly in our hand yeah. and we'll stick it in things randomly to see where the charge is. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry guys we're gonna we're gonna figure out this this electric thing and get this van pimped out with all the bisexual lights i'm talking purple i'm talking magenta i'm talking cyan i'm talking all the fuckery bokery 
Uh, that said, if there's anyone listening in Portland who knows any queer electricians, send them our way. <laughs> there's no such thing. But if there, there's queer mechanics here. No, no, that's here. not. No, they're lying to you. They're just a mechanic <laughs> who's desperate for money. That's and they've resorted to intim- impersonating gay people. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, I, I'm mostly basing this off of random ramblings that I've had like in my turf brain. Like ideology. Yeah, you know, just like assumptions that I've kept with myself because of my neglect from my mother's. But you know, I just, I, I, you know, I, I, I get by. But yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, they're not queer. There's no such thing. <laughs> uh, so if you are a the only which, you know, everybody, you know, if you are one of the many straight mechanics, please contact us to um, <laughs> hook up our jacuzzi set in the we electric. We are not going to have a jacuzzi a set. A indoor jacuzzi set that uh, <laughs> makes up our bed. That is also our bed. Yeah. I'm just, I feel like the hardest part is because since it was worked out a little bit, there's so many wires that go into like the walls of the van, and I have no idea what they're what they are. There's even lick them, <laughs> see what happens, and then you'll usually know. You'll be like, "That's AC." There's even an on-off switch, and you can hear a sound when it's on, and then you turn it off. Like as it turns off, you hear a sound, and I don't know what it is. I've pushed it multiple times while the car was running, while the car was off. I don't know, but it's it lights up. It's probably a ghost. <laughs> the ghost switch. Yeah, it's probably the dead couple that died in that van. I have theories about that couple. <laughs> <laughs> they broke up. That's my thing. Because uh, we should say, because there's a bunch of markings on the van. Yeah, and there's um, a lot of, sp- like, I found one that said, like, it was spray painted onto the plywood that said, I love you. There was one that said, four wheels, two hearts. And and there's like, like a little doodle of like some weird anime like yeah. creature like on it. It looks like a really like someone really killed it on the eyes of like an anime eyes and then they're like, What's a mouth look like? I don't know, like here's the teeth. Like it's it's yeah. It's very weird. It looks almost something like I would draw in my like notebook if I was really drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like I wish I could meet them, partially because I'm so interested in the story, but also because I'm like, okay, can you tell me what the fuck you did? <laughs> Not in, like, an insulting way, but just in a... I feel like I'm working off of somebody else's plan, and I do not have the blueprint, so I'm just trying to, like, figure out yeah, what Yeah, there's, like, did. a bomb in the corner. Like, we don't know what it does. Like, there's some piping. We think that might have been, like, for manufacturing pipe bombs. We don't know. But there's a, there is, like, an actual bomb in the corner of the van that we that is wooded off by a, a wooden wall. There's some kind of machine or something we we've hypothesized and i've had to message multiple people who have asked their dads for opinions yes so, many many dads have been asked to rise from their chairs yeah. to look, for, look at their daughter's our uh boy's phone and see uh what the fuck this thing is and they couldn't figure it out they're like oh maybe it has something to do with like temperature control because it's got that vent coming out of it but like nobody has any clue and it's like, there's a whole bunch of screwed in wood paneling around it. I tried to rip it out this morning, but no What? Luck. No, man. <laughs> I just want to know. You can just get know. a screw gun. There's like, it's screwed in. You can get it out. I know, but I, I didn't. You're just like alone. It's like, give me. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> no. I was just like, oh, can I just pull it out? And the answer is no. And I wasn't committed enough to like come back down with tools. But I just wanted to see if I could find a logo or like any what the fuck is this object and there's nothing that i can see yeah i well in all seriousness i i think it's like some kind of pump it looks like a pump that i would see on like you know something that I would like use to like and you know since there was those pipes yeah, in the those, car like, we i think at least that it must have been like they were thinking that they were going to like have a running faucet or mm-hmm. something like that I think, if anything, it kind of seems like this van, and also, because it came with solar panels, Yes. too, uh, these, like, pretty high-grade solar panels, yeah. and they had some wiring that was, like, pretty crazy. Yeah. 
Uh, almost, and it almost it makes me... It had, like, an entire mini fuse box. It almost makes me think that they were like, oh, let's do this. But they were going to make it, like, too crazy. Yeah. Like, they were going to go full balls to the wall. Like, we're going to have, like, a fucking oven. And we're going to have, have a, a shower. running, yeah. full running shower. We're going to have a bed. We're going to have, like, all this, like, stuff. Yeah. Like, it was going to be, like, crazy. But then, like, they kept realizing that, one, they probably didn't have the funds. They definitely didn't have the know-how to do it <laughs> on their own. And they just were like, fuck it. And they probably just moved on. I don't know if I think they didn't have the funds. And here's why I say that. Uh-huh. My hypothesis is that um, they probably had quite a lot of funds, I think, because... I guess that's true. Like Because the van has really low mileage on it, so the previous owners had to have bought it new. And it's a big fucking van. It's like the XL model of the fucking... So it almost feels like maybe like a couple of like a rich fucking couple or something like that. They did this off a whim because they yeah. can't. And it's it. a Why 2017 not? van. Yeah, and they were like gonna work on this, and but then they were like they were adding so much crazy shit, and they were like this van ain't gonna do it. It's not gonna do it. Let's just sell this one, pocket a little change off a trade, get ourselves a fucking RV, baby. Oh, fully. maybe. Yeah, they just, like, went fucking, like, they, they were like, oh, they, you know, this is too small. This wasn't, like, this isn't really what we're thinking. Or, like, you know, they were, like, going along the project and they just realized that this wasn't meeting their, like, expectations of what they really wanted something Especially because they surrendered the solar panels, too. Because mm -hmm. if it were me, I would sell the solar panels to fucking whoever. So to just get rid of them like that, they had to have not been too concerned about the money involved. Oh, yeah. I mean, they must have, like, they, they probably just, yeah, I mean, like, they, they must have just been people who just had enough cash to be thrown around like that. Yeah. And they, they did that. And wasn't, like, roughly 2017, wasn't that when van life was, like, really trending? I mean, yeah, but, you know, it's it's been around for a no, while. No, it's been around, but I remember there was a peak. It might have like... been when it was popping off. Who fucking knows? I mean, this is, like, you know, West Coast area. Like, how, much, how much you want to know, like, how much you want to bet it was, like, some fucking trust fund kid. Mm -hmm. And they had, like, a couple or something. Uh, and it was, like... You know, like, oh, daddy, I want you to buy this van for me. Yeah. And me and my girlfriend, we're going to build it up. We're going to yeah. make it into this awesome thing. And they and they were doing it, and then they broke up. And he didn't want to do it anymore. He's like, sell the damn thing. He's like, what, <laughs> fucking ever. And, they just buy it, and now we have it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I guess the case will never be solved. Maybe we should get those... Um, uh, unsolved guys to come and investigate our van and see what ghosts remain. <laughs> yeah, in the, yeah. In the in the, in the hollow tomb of what Benji. If somebody died while building it. Uh, judging how badly ghosts. they fucked up that staple gun application, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they <laughs> just were like, "I wonder what this does," and put it in their mouth and like pulled the trigger. <laughs> like you know, like we don't fucking know. I no. Mean, it Benji's haunted. Yeah, that would be cool. I would love to have a tiny house that's haunted. <laughs> what imagine... is the ghost gonna do? They can't even open the cabinets all the way. Well, They're imagine the like room. a Conjuring movie yeah, where like yeah. those fucking two schlucks. They fucking... put up one cross and the whole place is safe. Yeah, they just go like, "There's an evil demon in your trunk. It's <laughs> trying to. In it's your trying. Trunk. <laughs> it's trying. It's trying to get to you." You must be careful. <laughs> Here, spread rosemary around the house. Okay. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> there we go. There's no doors to slam and lock with kids in them. They're right? like, oh, uh, thank God you got out of the house and got uh, and came here. Wait a second. How did you get here? And then they look out the window. <laughs> it's the fucking van. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, just drive away from the ghost. Oh, yeah, man. That'd be sick if our van was haunted. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love it. It's true. It's true. It's actually haunted. Please come fucking unsolved. <laughs> yeah. Solve our mystery. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. 
Um, but yeah, lots of lots of things to say about the van. So you were you were really anxious. I like to the point where like I could feel it, and it was like seeping into me almost. So how are you feeling now? Because you asked me how I was feeling, but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, let's, hey, it's confession time, everybody. It's confession time. Um, I'm an idiot. I don't, I don't do well at life. Um, most of the time I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2. That's my life. Um, and it's feeling sorry for myself on my couch and doodling and podcasting it's not it's not a very it's not a very um productive life considered to most somebody's got to do it yeah somebody's got to do it you know who's who else is going to be john martin and be at my desktop and making funny cowboy noises to make myself laugh yeah who else is going to do that other than me and podcast um but uh you know anyways but again you're you're always the brains of the operation you know, you're, you're the one who actually like adults and does things <laughs> that are like productive and I just show up and do my job. And I think, you know, I like this being like the first time where I'm like actually making a, I, what I feel like a solid, like a choice for myself that feels like, you know, oh, I'm actually like contributing to something in some way was just something that, like, fucking shook me to my core. Um, to something where I'm just like, oh, I gotta run away from this. I can't, like, embrace it. Like, outside of your comfort zone kind um, of feeling. Yeah, but, um, you know, now I feel good because it's just, like, I think all of the hows are kind of, like, not as important to me as just the process of it. And, uh, hey, it's something to work on, and, uh, yeah, and fuck it, I'll, I'll say it, I'm not gonna fail like the last guy. I'm not gonna be the fucking person who just throws this away yeah. and says fuck it. Um, you know, I'm gonna make something out of this, and, hey, you know, it's, it's better to start somewhere and do something cool and not just float around life like I do. So I'm doing something. Hey, and it's building a van, I guess. <laughs> you you don't get your pick of what, but you're doing something. No, well, no, it. no. I mean, I picked this, but yeah. uh, you know, about building something. You know, yeah. hey, and it's uh, it's a form of a house, and that's <laughs> hey, that's the that's the modern way. You yeah. can't you can't buy a property. You got to buy a van. Yeah. So hey, once you once you guys look at our fancy moving mansion <laughs> while you're roaming the desert wasteland going like i think we'll oh. be roaming the desert wasteland but driving through it yeah well yes but we'll be fine we'll be in our desert we'll be on our rolling mansion <laughs> of benji but while these fucking cretans who didn't believe us after the housing market crashes and all there's no more homes and they're just wandering the streets <laughs> no more homes. as raiders as raiders wow um in anarchy total anarchy like mad max they they will they will be looking at us going damn we should probably rob those people <laughs> and they will they will rob us no. <laughs> but what a way to go in mad max hell land <laughs> well i'm really glad you feel that way that makes me really happy because i was so nervous that you would like regret hate it. you yeah oh i don't worry that's i'm already i'm already there it was Aww. before the van <laughs> I'm, I hate you forever, baby. Aww. I'm gonna hate you to the day we fucking die. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking hate the shit out of you. No, you love me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's all the van updates I guess we have. Maybe we'll do a little segment where we'll update our progress for accountability. Yeah, there there will be there will be other uh, updates I'm sure and talking of that. But that's a pretty big thing that was happening to us and. Really, you know, there was, so there was a lot of, like, pause in episodes because of, like, a lot of this energy that we were, like, expressing with that. So, uh, I guess we partially wanted to make some up episode just to update people, and it's a pretty big thing out of our life, and we felt like we could riff on that for a little bit. But another thing, because we're, you know, we're out of 30 minutes, we don't want to leave you so starved for content. <laughs> 
we're going to have you a little bit more. Um, but uh, one thing that we also did recently that I thought was kind of cool and something that I think is a little bit more core centric to gay programming topics is uh, we went to a little bit of an art class, I guess you want to say, or art exhibit. Trans figure drawing session. Yeah, it was a sketch drawing session, but it was hosted by a trans organization. I think they're called, I'm going to put them. T for T Art Collective. Yeah, I'm going to put them down below. They're really cool people. They make some really cool art. If you're a fan of like modern art or that kind of stuff, but especially queer art and modern art form, they make some cool stuff. Check them out. Especially if you're in the Portland area, you might find some shit you really like. Uh, but anyways, uh, we went to one of their events, which was kind of a sketch drawing thing. And um, Merlin compromised the integrity of our relationship by posing nude in front of a class of perverts. <laughs> <laughs> that was just too ridiculous for you to say with a straight face. I can't, I can't so even you just lost it. <laughs> but no, Merlin, Merlin did some did some posing uh, and got paid. Yeah. That's right. That's right, uh, uh, bitches. I'm dating a fucking male model. <laughs> Those fucking whores thought I could never do it. But fuck you. Look who's talking. Mama's got a fur coat. Yeah, with the $20 cut of the door fee that I got. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I know. But how, how was that? I mean, that, that must have... Because that was your first time doing something like that, ever. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd modeled before, you know, friends' clothing lines or jewelry or even the one time when I was a youngster and I had my hair dyed in a salon. Uh, she wanted me to model the end result for her. Um... But no, never nude, never like in person, because everything I listed has to do with pictures or videos, and I've never like in person, real time modeled. <laughs> um, it was so fun though. I just I wasn't even scared about being nude because I was like they're trans, and also I have a human body. What's so shocking about that? Um, I was, however, nervous that for some reason. Maybe there was some secret amongst the art world of of a pose that is just stupid and you never do it. And that was going to be the first pose that I did instinctively. And then everybody in unison would yell, boo, we hate you, go away. And then they would chase me naked out of the building. Which happened. And it was pretty pretty <laughs> awful. It was very harsh. And I didn't didn't really respect a lot of the people there after that. No, it was lovely. Uh, everyone was very encouraging. Uh, I felt very respected when I was just hanging out with the other models in our separate little room. And we were just chilling with our dicks out, as one does. Um, but no, it was, it was a very relaxing, very comforting atmosphere, and I might even get to do it again next month. We will see. But I am very, very grateful for the opportunity and for the little cut of the donations that I got. That was very sweet of them as well, because I thought I would be doing it for free. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it was pretty dope. And I, I think, um, you know, uh, the, the host of the event um was basically said the reason why they do this is basically to have a trans bodies existing in spaces uh and having like a time to like basically you know appreciate the trans body as art has appreciated other cis normative body forms um and uh you know i thought it was really cool in that aspect and i i went because uh i wanted to get better at sketching and oh boy got a lot of work to do but regardless i thought like i still appreciated being in that environment because uh even past it being an artistic statement it was something that was inherently trans mm -hmm. and something that was i think is is really good for for like culture and i think stuff like this is kind of important and, uh, you know, of course, this kind of thing will only attract people who are already a part of the choir, most likely. You're not going to get some, you know, you're not going to get grandma who misgenders you to come to the transfigured drawing 
uh, nude drawing, but you know, it is at least something that I think uh, can give someone who is trans a potential to really feel like that's a safe space. Yeah. Like something that like really brings to a point that your body is normal. And here are people who, you know, just like you are trans, like, and here's their bodies. Yeah, no, definitely, like, what I really loved about it was how, you know, there was so much about it that, because, like, you know, I've, I was kind of nervous because I've had, like, you know, I know some friends who have had figure modeling experiences that were very strict and it was very, like, you must hold this pose perfectly for an hour, you cannot move you have to do all of this stuff that seems unrelated to figure modeling for some reason. And the, you know, just very, like, unwavering. And this space is very, like, oh, you decide how long you want to hold the pose. We're going to have some chill music playing. If you need to readjust or you're like, oh, fuck, I goofed. This is a really uncomfortable pose. Just let us know, like, hey, I'm going to hold this pose for 20 more seconds. Um, it was very model oriented, not, yeah. not exploitative in the slightest. Yeah. And they even said like, if anyone for any reason makes a comment on your body or makes you feel uncomfortable, let us know they are gone. No questions asked, which, um, again, just really helps with like, not only safety, but like just emotional comfort, especially cause like, you know, I'm sure for people who have done it, you know, since they started, they probably didn't bat an eye anymore but for me when this was my first time being nude in a room full of strangers and with the history of like eating disorder problems that I have it was very comforting to know that um and I'm also it kind of relates back to you know feelings of myself because I used to literally like even fully clothed I wouldn't leave my room because I didn't even want my mom to see my body in clothes and now I'm bigger than I was then and more visibly trans, I'm just gesturing at my chest scars, yeah. uh, than I was then. And I was naked in a room full of strangers and my girlfriend. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just really proud of myself and I felt so confident and it was so exhilarating and yeah, it was such a good experience. Yeah, it was, it was almost spiritual in a way. Yeah. And I know that's like a really fucking like typical white woman way thing to yeah. say about anything it's like i was at starbucks and i'm spiritual spirituals <laughs> <laughs> like but uh no i mean it, it was um it was at least calming in a way but it was something that really this like deep uh uh appreciation i guess would just be yeah. would be the word it's just I a think deep appreciation yeah and i think that's just the beauty of having a trans only space and that really just speaks to the necessity of it because even a lot of queer spaces are not like strictly trans only because there's a lot of like pandering to allies and like stuff which i understand the reason for however like we both just experienced firsthand how incredible trans only spaces can be regardless of like how you identify and what being trans means to you but that like mutual respect and mutual understanding almost felt so gentle in a way that you don't really get when you're around like cis normative spaces um and not saying like oh every cis normative space sucks like they're the majority of spaces but um yeah, it is, like, a really special thing to be, like, these people collectively get it when it's something that has ostracized you for so much of your life. Yeah, like, to, to once feel, like, a little normal. A little, yeah. like, we're not normal, but comfortable in your own skin. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Gay Programming. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, we upload infrequently, but we're hopefully mm -hmm. not going to have a as big uh, uh, wait for the next one, my little piglets. Um, <laughs> that's what you're officially called now, fans <laughs> of the show. <laughs> your little what? Your little piglets. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, we, we can get you more uh but uh yeah here's our pitch of how you can keep in contact with the show and everything we have an instagram gay programming where you can get updated on when show when episodes are uploaded and keep in the loop on that so good place to check out 
Uh, Merlin has an Instagram and it, what the fuck is it called now? It's a new I name. I changed it. Uh, it's Faye Punk. Faye Punk. Uh, it's going to take a while for me to remember that. Uh, but Faye Punk is over there and uh, yeah, they're just a lifestyle vlog. So if you're a trans person who wants to see more trans people in your feed, by all means, follow Merlin. He's a, he, he's a real good cat. Uh, but, uh, yeah, me, I'm Fem Marks. I'm way cooler. You can see my poetry and my doodles and my art on Fem Marks. Uh, I also do an occasional book review on there of comic books and stuff. So if you like that kind of shit, check that out. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Merlin has a nonprofit, Accessible Wellness Project, uh, PDX. Which is pretty cool. I think it's I, just accessiblewellness.pdx. It right? is, actually, now that yeah. you say it. But accessiblewellness.pdx. And uh, yeah, Merlin, uh, it's a really awesome nonprofit uh, that gives, uh, a lot of ho- uh, gives a lot of great, good, needed supplies to the needy folks who need them. Uh, so if you want to. I know that was really bad, but no, you, no, it's good. You can read a much better pitch over at over on his Instagram. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Uh, well, thank you again, uh, Merlin. You got anything to say to the audience before we close out? No, you did great. Bye, everyone. Love you. See ya. Bye. Choo, choo. Миллиарды плохих актеров Сзади пусто почти один